So, do you know what you want in retirement? Have you ever thought about it? Some people haven't. I, in this last book, I have so many people tell me that they have absolutely no idea what they're gonna do when they retire. So, I have a whole chapter of happy things to do in retirement. Everyone I ever met, all the things they did, so. 100 different ideas. So write down everything that you want to do. And it's just anything, it doesn't have to be thought, just keep on writing, okay? Then write down everything you don't want to do, you know? I don't want to take up the garbage, or you know, I want to do this. <laughs> so I'm gonna count and stick it in the sheet and down it goes, right? So then you have a thing to look at, a balance, right? This is stuff that gives me joy, this is stuff that doesn't give me joy. And you just get rid of this stuff bit by bit by bit and you end up doing more of this, right? It's like a very logical process of organizing your life. But you're being a bit slick there. Because right we down, have to take out the Right, garbage. we'll have questions later. <laughs> yeah. Write down where you live in a hotel. <laughs> Write down where you want to be <laughs> and what you want to do and what you're gonna be doing a year from now. Okay? So what do you want to do a year from now? Write it down. Then ask yourself, how come I'm not doing it right now? Okay? Ask yourself, what's holding me back? How can I change the situation so I can do what I want to do? So you come up with a plan to do what you want to do. Just do the things you want to do. Come up with ways to get there. Okay? Very simple. Like how much do you want to save? So you put things into a retirement account every month and so on. Same thing over here. You plan it out. So the feeling of love is very powerful. I have that in there because it's an extremely important component of your life and overall well-being. So put yourself in a situation or a place of a rough where you're loved or you love things around you. Love for another person. <clears throat> Volunteer in an organization okay, that gives out love. Contribute to society. Very important. Gives you a feeling of self-worth. Donate your time and resources for a better good. You'll make the entire universe better and you make the world better. Put you in a state of love. In order to be happy in life, you have to give more than what you get. It doesn't make any sense, but it actually works very well. By giving, abundance will flow to you. By giving up your time, for example, right now I work for free. <clears throat> I'm a doctor, I used to make a lot of money getting paid, but I give it back to people that can't afford it, okay? So I'm giving back to society. Uh, you will be engaged with other people. You will make this world a better place. Whatever good deeds you do will come back to you many, many times. It's like written in all the scriptures, no matter what religion you are, but it really is true. The more you give, the more you're gonna get back. Don't worry, be happy. You have to have a great attitude towards life. You have to look at the glass being always half full. If you complain, it's half empty. If you're positive, it's half full. Take one day at a time and enjoy that day. You have many, 8,000 some seconds? So enjoy every minute of that. It may be the last day you have, or maybe the first day or the next day. You, know, it's, you keep a positive attitude and you enjoy each day. Live fully. Enjoying the things you like to do. So there's no reason to be doing things you don't want to do. So as I said before, you eliminate them and just do the things that are positive that will make your life a great experience and a good way to go out in life being happy. You've worked real hard your whole life, so just make it a good ending, okay? Worrying gets you nowhere, so enjoy every moment. I am enjoying myself right here. This is where I live in that building in St. Petersburg, and it's a beautiful place for walking, riding bicycles, and rollerblading, going to the symphony, and all that. When I was traveling a couple of years ago, I was in Newfoundland, and I went to a level one retirement facility, and there was this lady who was like 94 years old, so I wanted to interview her, because everyone says she had such a great positive attitude, and she said, You've got to keep your mind going because without your mind, you have nothing. Very, very true. That comes from a 94-year-old. She had a stack of, you know, large print crosswood puzzles. She was all dressed up for the interview. Her hair was done. She had, you know, pictures of her relatives in there and flowers. Very peppy, fun-loving person. And that's what she said. Keep your mind going. 
She also said, don't sweat the small stuff. It just doesn't matter. You know, all these little bickering things and all the things, just don't forget about them. You know, if they're bothering you, just move yourself away from that. The small stuff makes no difference whatsoever. So what did Jessie do to stay mentally sharp? She did large print crossword puzzles. She walked regularly. That's pretty good for a 94 year old. Uh, my oldest dance partner, I did a solo dance, I'm a ballroom dancer, so I like to do that for a fun exercise and mental stimulation. There's a whole book I wrote on it called Dance to Live. But what she did, she was ballroom dancing. My oldest partner right now is 93 years old that I dance with, and she can do a Viennese waltz at 93, which is wow. pretty good. Uh, she went ballroom dancing weekly. She didn't eat a lot. She said, just enough to keep me going. So she followed one of my principles, caloric <coughs> restriction. She kept on constantly learning new things. I went to the uh, ALF she was in. She was reading. Other people were sitting around in front of my TV, like that, not doing anything. Her minds were becoming mushed while she was reading, learning new things, OK? She was a very happy, positive person. She turned lemons into lemonade for everyone. So you can decide to have a happy mind. You turn your greatest adversity into your greatest asset. Don't let things bother you. Just, it just doesn't matter. Little things don't matter anymore. At this stage in life, just enjoy yourself. If you need little things, get rid of them. Make people feel wonderful around you. Build them up. Make them feel great. They'll do the same for you. Have as much as fun as possible. At the same time, do as much good as possible for people around you. Be it your spouse, your children, your friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, neighbors, your church, your synagogue, volunteer organizations. That's giving back to society. Your mind controls your biological functions, your hormonal levels. Hormones are very important. A little chapter on that your spirit and your zest for life, your anti-aging processes, and your mood. That's all. You, you decide that. It's all through your mind. Smile and the whole world smiles with you. Cry and you cry alone. So if you smile a lot, you have a lot of friends. So your mental attitude is one of the secrets of healthy aging. When I used to go to retirement facilities in a long big towers in St. Petersburg, because Florida is a big retirement area, and so is Arizona. But people that move there, you know, have saved up so they can afford living there. And I'd see people of various ages, so let's say 70 to 105, okay? But ones over 100 had the greatest attitude I've ever seen. They're happy, engaged, they're doing crafts, they're doing, going to movies, all kinds of stuff. Sometimes the 70 year olds were just always moaning and complaining. You know, the others were 30 years older and much better health and mental health. So that's how important the mind is in controlling your life and your aging processes. Constantly stimulate your mind. <coughs> Learn new things. Why is that important? Because the brain stores things in different areas <coughs> and it retrieves it, like from a computer and a hard drive, brings it back so you can speak once your memory is formed. It's not in one little area, okay? So the more gray matter you have, the more connectors, the easier it is for you to make connections, associations, or learning things. If your brain shrinks, you can't make it as quickly. You can't remember things. So it's important to constantly learn new things because learning new things makes the brain grow larger. Okay? They've done studies on that. I'll bring that up. Learn to play an instrument that is very healthy for the brain. Walk a lot, extremely healthy for the brain. Expose yourself to new ideas and different ways of thinking. I think there's a lecture right now of Taoism, Buddhism, and so on. I missed that because I was getting it for that. That would have been interesting to see, learn that way of thinking by watching on television. It's very important to expose yourself to different ideas so you make your own decisions instead of just following one idea. Play a sport. That gives you physical activity. Ballroom dancing makes split-second decisions and brain, brain cells. They have shown that later on, I'll ask the question. Uh, and they've been shown in different studies by dancing, especially if you have to follow the lead, you have to decide what has to be done right then and there. 
that stimulus of a last minute causes the brain to grow on these cells. Neuroplasticity is induced by <coughs> mental stress of learning. Neuroplasticity is the growth and the elasticity of a brain to expand. Like we have skin expanders. Remember we're trying to, after a surgery, let's say breast surgery, we try to build a new breast, we put expanders in her, and skin grows, 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 and that's plasticity of skin. Same thing happens to the brain. It grows, grows, grows. Okay?